One way to make a simple matrix with two as a repeated eigenvalue is to make a diagonal with twos along the main diagonal. But if I did that, that would not work for this problem because it would be a diagonal matrix, not a Jordan canonical form, which is not diagonal. So what's a Jordan canonical form? Put something, well, put a one up there. That's the Jordan canonical form. A Jordan canonical form of a two by two matrix with a repeated eigenvalue is an upper triangular matrix with the eigenvalues along the main diagonal and one in the upper right corner. Such a matrix is not diagonalizable. There's no P you could find that would make P inverse JP diagonal. It just is impossible. It's pretty easy to verify. <clears throat> you could try an example of a general P and you would do a bunch of calculations and you'd see it, never, it would never work. Here's another way to see it. Two times the identity matrix. You remember the homework problem where I said a constant times the identity matrix is only similar to itself? That was a homework problem last a week ago or so. Any P you would come up with and multiply P inverse times this matrix times P is going to give you the same matrix back because this matrix matrix commutes with every other square two by two matrix. The P and P inverse would still cancel even though they're on opposite sides of the I, the two I. So this is only similar to itself. So it can't possibly be similar to this, but they would have the same eigenvalues. Two would be a repeated eigenvalue in both cases. This is already a diagonal matrix. It's diagonalizable because it's already diagonal. It does have a basis of eigenvectors. Every non-zero vector in the plane is an eigenvector for this, it turns out. Because you multiply this times any non-zero vector, or even the zero vector, and you get that vector back, or two times it back, excuse me. V is any vector, you multiply this matrix times that vector, you're going to get two times that vector back. It's going to be, a, if it's a non-zero vector, it's going to be an eigenvector for the eigenvalue two. So this does have a basis of eigenvectors, but this one doesn't. And you could try to find the eigenvectors and see you're only going to get one line of eigenvectors. Only one linearly independent eigenvector It would not be a basis for the plane. What I'd like to do is I'd like to create a new matrix A whose Jordan canonical form is this matrix. How do you do that? I think I showed you this trick before. Just write down any matrix P you want that's invertible. And to make its inverse easy to find, make it have a determinant of one. Oh, I could pick, say, four. What do I want to pick here? Uh, when I have a determinant of one, four, three, one, one has a determinant of one. So it's inverse is easy to find, P inverse, one over the determinant, which is going to be one, swap the numbers in the main diagonal, negate the numbers on the off diagonal. There's P inverse, one, negative three, negative one, four. If I make a matrix A, that's P, J, P inverse. You put the P first of the P inverse. It, it really doesn't matter, but, you know, if P is invertible, then the inverse of P is also P itself. The in inverse of P inverse is P itself. So it doesn't really matter, but. Usually, this, this is equivalent to saying J is P inverse AP. Usually, when you've got, when you're trying to diagonalize A, you put the P inverse in front of the A. If P has columns that are the eigenvectors of A. Hang with me here. So let's see what happens when we do this.
multiply it out. I'll multiply the first two here. Four times two is eight. Three times zero is zero. Four times one plus three times two is gonna be 10. One times two, two. Looks like the product of these two gives that, if I didn't make a mistake. Somebody check my work. Now multiply these two, maybe really check my work on those two. Looks like this is gonna be a negative two. Let's see, negative 24 plus 40, 16. Negative one and 12 minus six, six. Please double check that in your head. I just made P up. I just picked a P that had a determinant of one, so it's the inverse was easy to find. I'm just trying to make an example. I'm trying to give you insight into how to make examples because that can give you insight into what's going on. I will re-go over it. So I claim if I've not made a mistake, this matrix A, which is certainly not a very special looking matrix, it's not symmetric, it's not diagonal, it's not upper triangular, it's not lower triangular. If I have not made a mistake, it should have a repeated eigenvalue of two and it should not be diagonalizable because it's similar to J. Okay, let's, so let's check it. Let's find it, the determinant of A minus lambda I. Okay, let's just find the trace and determinant. Trace is four, determinant is negative 12 plus 16 is four. I, yeah, I think we're on the repeated root parabola. T squared over four here is four squared over four is 16 over four is four. In the trace determinant plane, the values of T and D for this matrix are gonna put us on the repeated root parabola What's the characteristic polynomial? It would be lambda squared minus four lambda plus four, set that equal to zero. It factors as lambda minus two quantity squared. Yep, two is a repeated eigenvalue. Let's go ahead and find eigenvectors. I need to think about a minus lambda i here. So I'm gonna find the eigenvectors. Negative two minus lambda, 16, negative one, and six minus lambda, replace lambda with two. And the, you should get rows that are multiples of each other. If I replace lambda with two there, I get negative four, negative four X plus 16 Y equals zero. Probably should double check the other one as a multiple of it. If I replace lambda with two here, six minus two is four. Yeah, these equations are multiples of each other. They have the same solution set. And that solution set is one dimensional. It's all vectors that are scalar multiples of four, one. All vectors that lie along this line with a slope of one fourth. All non-zero such vectors are eigenvectors and no others. So there's not a, there's only one linearly independent eigenvector, any non-zero multiple of that one. So there's not a basis of eigenvectors for the plane. So this matrix is not diagonalizable. What is its Jordan canonical form? You'd have to undo all this stuff to get back to J. You'd have to do this, figure out P and do this calculation to get back to J and there it would be. But how do you do that? Not in the typical way. Do notice this P that I happen to pick, its first column for one is an eigenvector for one, but its second column's not. So how would you figure out the second column? It's hard actually to figure out the second column. What I do in the lecture though, is I try to make it as easy as possible. I just say, well, I don't know what the second column should be. Let me call the numbers B and D and see if I can just figure out B and D by, by actually multiplying this out and setting it equal to this and solving for B and D is what I do. And what you should do on your homework as well. 
I also talk about something called generalized eigenvectors. You'll see that in the lecture. But you really don't have to know much about generalized eigenvectors to, to solve for B and D. I mean, it's good to know what they are, but you can be ignorant about them and still solve for B and D. Okay. Hard concept. I, I, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. I'm, Jordan canonical form is an advanced topic. I'm introducing it here to, in, in a two by two context to make it as easy as possible. It is related to some things in the book, though the book never caught, talks about Jordan canonical form. It's related to the content in the section about repeated eigenvalues, section 3.5, which I had you skip initially. Be good to read that too, just to supplement it. Um, there's one more thing I was going to say, but I'm forgetting what it is. If I think of it, I'll send you an email about it. 